I think I'm concerned about the world and about social conditions, social issues in the world. Um, I mean, I think beginning my photographic journey in South Africa at the height of apartheid and I think as a very, very young person, I think it marked me as a photographer. And I think I've always been drawn to making work about the important issues facing my, ge my generation. So, you know, moving into the 90s, my focus became HIV and AIDS. You know, beginning with photographing HIV in 1993, I'm still working on it in, in, in different ways, you know, 30 years later. From around about 2006, 2007, I began to engage with issues around climate change, which kind of led into my Drowning World project and photographing flooding across the world for many years. And then more recently, just a couple of years ago, kind of burning world focus on fire or the aftermath of fire. Quite early on in 2007 with my work on flooding, I, I don't quite know how, but I sort of set upon this idea of making portraits of people in flood water. Making portraits is also partly strategic in terms of trying to find a way to work in situations where the, the, the news moment had moved on. And I think also in a, at a point in time where I felt photojournalism and documentary photojournalism, which is very much my background and my area of expertise, I felt it was very tired. It was quite natural to pause and have that moment of stillness to, to, to shoot a portrait. And if you kind of analyse those photographs, they're quite conventional portraiture. It's quite a conventional, expected classical portrait, but it's the context which is extraordinary and kind of makes it kind of quite striking but also quite disturbing. Kind of from about 2010 I began to shoot video more and more and I found video was a really interesting adjunct to my photographs particularly, particularly in gallery contexts. So what's happened now is that the video is what I shoot in the more, the more documentary moments. When things are happening I'm I'm shooting video and I'm not really even trying to shoot stills in those situations. And, and probably video is half of what I do in a, in a flooding context. The most important thing is, is the, those portraits, that's the spine, that's the centre of the project. Photographing the people that I do both with the Submerged Portrait series and with what the series I call Portraits, portraits in Ashes with, with Burning World, and it's never the same. Um, you know, there isn't one single method I have, and the circumstances are always different. Um, sometimes it's a matter of, you know, kind of complex research and trying to find people, you know, or, or luck. Sometimes pe people are right there, depending very much on the circumstances. Um, for example, um, when I was photographing in Somerset in 2014, when, when, when there was huge flooding, and one of the pictures we have here is the large portrait of Shirley Armitage. It was quite a complicated journey. The boat took us to the front door. We had to get out of the boat into the water. So I had this very intense moment of moving into the house and witnessing Shirley's, Shirley's shock and then making that portrait with, with her because it felt very collaborative. I'm completely aware of the contradictions of making work about climate change and then jumping on planes and flying around the world. You know, I began my work on Drowning World photographing floods in the UK. You know, this... Um, Display here, and particularly the freeze, uses all the tropes of kind of billboard advertising, but to make a very different kind kind of message. And I think it's in dialogue, or maybe in opposition to all the advertising that's just around the corner on on Oxford, Oxford Street in 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 the shop window. So it's a perfect place for me to show the work. And um, I think you know it's very hard to know what kind of impact it can have. And I think. Photography is a very limited voice, you know, in terms of, you know, and, and I've got friends, I know people who are real activists who really take, you know, put themselves and their lives on the line in all kinds, you know, they, they climb things, they go to, they go to jail, they, they risk their liberty, they risk their lives to make, you know, statements of climate activism. And I know this is just a fraction of what they do. But I think as a photographer, the most you can hope for is that your work might be just part of a broader wave, um, which can hopefully have some small impact on, on our society.